had a gun and anything I was afraid of. Now, Owen Rose, he had an older son, and and we had heard the story, and we kind of laughed it off. And uh, that old cattle critter story, we just kind of laughed it off, too. We didn't really much believe it. And I was like, well, I don't know what it was. We don't know what it was, but it certainly wasn't what they're trying to say. It was a seven to eight-foot creature, four feet wide. Nothing like that would it even be possible. And if we did believe something like that, there's no way you'd be able to go trapping uh, off down in the woods at night. And uh, so we just kind of left it off. But one of, one of the stories that uh, Owen's family told was uh, Owen had this older son. He was much older than us, and he had already left home and stuff when we were doing all this. But uh, this guy, he grew up out there. You know, he helped Owen with the cattle. He went down there. He deer hunted. He trapped back in the day. And uh, and this guy, you know, he was an outdoorsman, you know, and, and he would be growing up in that environment. So, uh, but anyway, the, they t- he told a story. He was he was down there hunting one afternoon, and uh, he hadn't seen anything. So he was walking back to his truck, and it was very late in the afternoon, almost getting dark on him. I know when you're deer hunting, you try to get every every bit out every bit of daylight you can because right before dark is when the and the deer come out so then you got to walk back to your pickup a lot of times you're having to walk in the almost dark so he finally gave up on the deer hunting he's making his way back to the pickup and anyway he was he's walking there and he's still carrying his gun and he he got a shell in it too because he's if he if he runs on a deer it pops out he's ready to shoot it so he's walking back to his truck and he heard something behind him and he turned around, and, and there's this big hairy thing, and it's so close enough to him, it's actually reaching for him. And, man, he spun that gun up, and he pulled the trigger on that gun, and it went off. And then he's he's freaking out, trying to run backwards, tripping, trying to reload the gun, and this thing takes off. And it, it takes off, and it and it runs off back into the woods. Well, he you can imagine this guy shook up after seeing this. So he comes home and he tells his dad Owen about this, and and Owen he he's an old rancher he you know he don't know what to think you know this kid's not crazy and he don't make up stories, so Owen don't know what to think but you know some, when something down there dies, oh, oh Owen finds it because of the of the buzzards, the buzzards will be circling if you kill something down there or something dies the buzzards is the first thing that I tell you where it's at and it, this is a lot of land to hunt to look you can't just you just can't go find a sick animal or something, you know. So, I mean, so he, Owen goes down there and he's looking for buzzers circling and there's nothing. There's nothing dead. Uh, nothing dead that it doesn't appear to be anything dead. So he, he goes to the area the kid's talking about and he finds a gun case in there on the ground and he finds some blood on the ground. And so Owen starts following this blood trail thinking, well, you know, I'll probably find it. It'll be dead down here or something. It's, but it's, it's not a real bad blood trail, but it's definitely bleeding. And so Owen tracks it down to this uh, Sandy Creek crossing. And when he gets to the Sandy Creek crossing, what he sees it, he says it's the strangest foot tracks he's ever seen. And, and Owen, he's one of those guys, he could see a foot track. He could, he sees a footprint. He could tell you what it is, you know, tell you if it's a coon, if it's a possum, you know, what it is. He's a very good tracker, and he he's seen this thing. He said, I don't know Never seen anything made tracks like that. And that's what Owen, that was Owen's assessment of it. Well, we know, we weren't worried about it. We laughed this stuff off. We didn't think anything about it. Uh, but I'm down there every every morning at 4 a.m. walking through the woods, uh, checking these traps. Well, you know, first thing I know is we're, we're in some prime trapping country here in north central Texas. I mean, and we're down there, we've got, uh, we probably got 12 to 15 traps, something like that. I can't remember for sure, but but I know we wouldn't. We should have had a whole lot more animals than we did. We wouldn't catch anything, and I kept finding these sticks. It was almost like somebody was walking up there and taking a stick and poking it in the trap and setting the trap off, and then uh, then all the bait's gone out of it, and uh, it was quite frustrating. You know, we wouldn't. The whole point of us doing this was to make some money. And uh, and this is prime country to be catching animals, and we weren't catching anything. And it was quite frustrating for us. And so uh, we're talking it over. So you know what? 
said, we're going to have to just move some of our traps or something because we ain't having any luck. And uh, and a lot of the animals we were catching, and, and the reason we're running the traps twice a day is because if you're trapping it, if you leave an animal in the trap too long, it'll actually chew its own leg off. And then the pelts ain't hardly worth anything. They dock you real bad on the pelts. So you have to... You have to get the animals out of the trap quickly, uh, or or the pelt gets run. And so we're running it like you're supposed to twice a day. And and, and a lot of the animals we ran in their legs, it was almost like they chewed their legs off. But you know, thinking back to me, it seemed like something's pulling their legs off, like something's grabbing these grabbing these animals and just dragging them out of the trap. You know, like another animal came along and just pulling their legs out, not like they chewed their leg off. Uh, but it's frustrating, man, because we're having some expensive animals that we could have made a lot of money off of, and all I've got in my trap is a leg. You know, so we're pretty frustrated that we're not catching anything, and the ones we are catching are getting ruined or stolen or whatever. So it was uh, pretty frustrating for us. So we decided we were going to meet up one weekend uh we went down there, and we're going to move some traps around and stuff, and, uh, and and it's not very often. Both of us got to go down there at the same time. So uh, me and my buddy, we're down there together in his pickup, and we we get the traps moved and stuff like that. So, all right, all right, you know, now we'll see if we can do any better. And we said, well, you know, in, in October down here, it's it's prime bullfrog season, and we'd already been by some stock ponds, and, and uh, we had already – shot some big old bullfrogs and you can fry up them frog legs and they're really good uh they kind of taste like chicken <laughs> but uh, they're really a delicacy down here a southern delicacy down here so uh, so you know what to the so man we ought to go up to this there's another pond up in this area that you can't even get to by truck the roads all washed out so you literally have to walk up there and the reason we don't trap up there is because it's just too far. It's just too far to walk. It takes too much time to get back there to it. Uh, but we got everything done, and there was still some daylight left. And we decided, well, let's you know, let's go to that little pond up there, the frog pond we call it. Let's go up there and see if there's some frogs up there. You know, we got our guns. We got two twenty-two uh, automatic rifles so we walk up there we're going to check this pond out see if we can get some more bullfrogs maybe get enough to have a cookout so uh, me and my buddy we parked the truck as close as we can but it's still i know it's got to be at least uh i want to say probably half a mile that you're gonna have to walk up this old road to this pond and so we got our guns and we're shooting the crap and we're walking up here to the pond and once we get up to the pond, one of the things we notice is there's just thousands of little frogs, but there's no bullfrogs anywhere, no big frogs. All the big frogs are gone. And this pond is so full of these little frogs that you could literally just sit there beside it and catch them with your hand. I mean, there's just tons and tons of them, you know. I mean, you could sit there and eat frogs all day long and they're not catch them all. They're just jumping all over the place. Not one big frog to be found. And we were talking about wonder where all the big frogs are at. I can't imagine. You know, we're, And we were real quiet sneaking up to the pond, but we didn't want to spook the frogs. So we snuck up there and seen all these little frogs, and we start talking then. It was, we'd see, we didn't spook any big frogs, so now we're starting talking out loud. So we're having this conversation, wondering where all the mamas and daddies at. You know, all we got is these thousands and thousands of baby little frogs here in this pond, and and that's just not right. Well, we start talking loud, and the uh, next thing, first thing we hear is this scary roar. And I mean, I don't never heard anything roar like this, man. This is it's like a growl roar, and uh, and man, we spoke us both. We looked over, and this thing was close. It was probably fifty yards away, you know. And you could tell whatever it was, it was big and deep, and it made this loud roar. And I said, "My God, man!" And we. We got it. Start getting our guns. We took our guns off safety, and I'm like, okay, what in the heck is this? And the next thing I know, you could see, you could see the brush moving. You could see the trees, and I'm talking mesquite trees, and and we got some evergreen trees over here, and there's something like pushing its way through. The, you ever see that movie, Mighty Joe Young? That's exactly what it looked like. There's something so big moving through them trees, 
that you can literally see the tree shaking. And then all of a sudden we hear the cracking, a large cracking of a branch. Like it is a big branch just got cracked and like tore off a tree. And and we're just oh man, whatever this thing is, it's big, it's mean, it's pissed off and it's coming right towards us. And so we start backing up. And I'm sitting here, we, I got two guns. We got two guns, you know, and I'm like, I ain't afraid of nothing. Whatever it is, we're going to shoot it. <laughs> Whatever's coming out of this damn woods, we're fixing to kill it. And and I told my buddy, he said, all right, man, you get ready. Take aim. And we, you know, he said, said, get ready. You know, this thing just keep moving. You can see it moving through the trees, and it's almost moving into sight. And there's one big evergreen tree between us and it and the side of where this pond is. And this thing stops. And and I'm sitting there going, get ready, man, get ready. I dropped to one knee to get a better, I dropped to one knee so I could get a better aim at it. And I'm sitting there, I don't want I don't want to shoot it until I can identify it. I just don't want to blindly shoot at what we're seeing, which is bits and pieces of it. I don't want to take a chance on it being something that shouldn't be shot. And I respect, you know, this old man's property enough not to accidentally shoot one of his cows or something like that. So I'm not going to shoot until I see exactly what this thing is. And my buddy, he's sitting there, and he's he's got his gun loaded, too. We're sitting there looking at it, and this thing is moving behind this tree. Now, you can see now that whatever this thing is, it is like eight feet tall. It's four feet wide, and I can't see the head on it. I'm just waiting to see the head on it. This thing is moving from side to side. It looks like it's got shoulders and arms on them, and uh, and I'm going, my God, what in the hell is that? And 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 finally, my buddy, he said, I'm out of here, and, and he takes off, and I'm going, no man, hold your ground, hold your ground, and he just gone, he's gone, and I'm going, crap, man, I just lost half of my fighting force. <laughs> he took off to the truck, so I'm sitting here, and I'm not knowing exactly what to do, and I, and I'm not. I'm not retreating, and I'm looking at this thing, and it's looking at me, and it's moving from side to side, almost like you can't get a good look at its head on one side of the tree, then it moves its head to the other side, and what I'm looking at looks like a shoulder of a giant football player that's got this brown hair on it and on both sides. I can't get a clear view of the arm, but I can see the crease of the arm and the shoulder and the, and the biceps of this thing, and it looks just like a giant human with hair on it. But this thing is eight feet tall, and, and my God, it's wider than the tree. And uh, I'm going, oh, man, you know, this is not – and then it, the, and I'm going, man, I, whatever is going to happen here, I can tell I don't have enough gun to handle this guy. Whatever this thing is, I ain't, I've got a twenty two automatic, in, which is – you shoot something like this with a twenty two automatic, you're just going to piss it off. And uh, so I'm sitting there realizing, man – I I ain't got near the gun to handle whatever the hell this thing is. So I start trying to back out of there, and, and it, it, it occurs to me it's that my friend is scared. He's headed for the pickup. Now, how scared is he? I don't know how scared he is. He may jump in that truck, and he may haul ass and go to town for help. And leave me stranded out there with this damn thing. I don't know. So I'm like, I'm scared of what this thing is going to do to me if I run for fear it might give chase, so I'm backing away slowly. I'm keeping my gun aimed at it, so I'm backing up. And then I'm thinking at the same time, my buddy, I hope he's there. I hope he don't jump in that pickup and take off and leave me down here stranded with this thing. And so I have all these thoughts racing to my head. I'm backing out slowly, keeping aim at this thing. And finally, I start backing this thing out of sight where I can't really see it, but I'm still scared because I'm afraid this thing is going to come for me, come at me. And all of a sudden, I hear the, the the bushes rattle to the side of me. Boy, I spun around thinking it was trying to flank me, and I didn't see anything. And the, and, the, and the brush is so thick that you can't see anything in it. I mean, it's just really thick. And it was like, I can't imagine anything being in there, especially anything as big as that thing is. So I can't imagine what's making that sound. So I'm looking back and forth. I'm backing out, backing out. And I really wanted to just turn to run, but I'm afraid that if I run, it's just going to it's gonna see me turn my back and come at me. So I'm still backing up further, quicker. Then all of a sudden, the brush off to me rattles again. And I spin around again thinking something's going to flank me a second time. And this time, there's a huge rock. It's got to be half the size of a bowling ball. It comes rolling out of the trees. 
And I realized whatever this thing is is throwing rocks. And 